Hi, this is Dan Aykroyd. He's progressive. He's beautiful. He's thoughtful. He's intelligent. He's powerful. He's positive. He is Stephen Cuoco on Power 98.5 Satellite Radio. Empowering listeners from the U.S. to the U.K. Live on air with Stephen Cuoco. It's an exciting, exciting, exciting day, even though my voice was cleared. Sometimes I'll do my little warm-ups, and then all of a sudden, and I'm not going to complain, that good old New Jersey air. (laughs) It was like, we're going to be adding a little bit of in with your interview for today with Mr. Uh, Zeke Bridges, uh, also known as Ezekiel Bridges. Awesome guy. I I want to say, officially, we are friends. We're still getting to know each other. We can have candid conversations with each other. He knows I don't hold back from anything. I, I speak to him as though I've known him his entire life. Or he's known me his entire life, but we don't want to age him. He's uh, very much a lot younger than I am. But uh, yeah, Mr. Ezekiel Bridges, known as Zeke. It's making a huge dent in the entertainment industry as a dynamic and versatile actor. He's born in Los Angeles, 1993. Doesn't seem that long ago. But yeah, September 24th. Don't know what his birth sign is. We'll find out. Uh, And he carries with him a legacy of Hollywood royalty as the youngest grandson of the legendary film and television star Lloyd Bridges. And his wife, Dorothy Dean Bridges. But as you know, Ezekiel, a.k.a. Zeke, it's all about the name and the legacy that you're building for yourself and you're doing exceptionally well. That's right, Stephen, man. How you doing? I'm doing awesome. Welcome to, hey, live on air with Stephen Cuoco. Yeah, good to hear your voice. <laughs> you too. You've done a, a lot of great interviews. Uh, you're you're the media is loving you. You're getting a lot of great, you know, not only attention, but in a very, very good way. Uh, we've got a lot of things that we're going to talk about, some good old bullet points here, especially uh, with Eye of the Goat. Uh, where do you want to start off? Oh, well, you know, I don't know. Where do you want to start off? I was just <laughs> curious how, to see how you're doing today. Uh, well, as you know, I'm putting together a film festival here in my hometown of Phillipsburg, New Jersey, having conversations with Regal Cinema. Uh, I was told consider November of this year to do it. And I was like, well, that's going to be Thanksgiving. I don't know how. And, and living here on the northeast between New York, Pennsylvania and New Jersey, you can add Connecticut, but the the top three states. Uh most people usually travel to here and I'm thinking could the first weekend of November Zeke be a good idea definitely I don't think the second weekend maybe consider uh Halloween weekend I mean do people even go trick-or-treating anymore well yeah I think uh first week of November would be good maybe if you do it during Halloween people show up in costumes and stuff could be a good time yeah what do they call that um Trick or treating, that. But what is that that thing? Cos cosplay. Oh yeah, cosplay. <laughs> Come out your favorite movie character. Maybe we can get some movie submissions where people are in cosplay, and that would fit perfect. Like have a little mini festival in a festival. <laughs> yeah, that would be it. That'd be pretty cool. <laughs> I just said to um, to Scott over at Regal, he's huge in comic con i said i should plan after the first festival a comic con film festival where we can do like what you said where people can dress up come as your favorite character i'm not gonna lie i don't know much about comic con did read comics when i was younger i had many of them i don't think they exist anymore don't know what happened i mean is, is you as an eight kid from the 70s and 80s um, you would think we would know better of taking care of things, yet uh, back then a lot of things could easily be replaced and they didn't cost as much as things cost today. But if I knew really, really 
was responsible Zeke. And I always took care of my stuff. But if I knew that my comic books really could have been of worth, I would have really have kept them in a plastic and oh, locked them up in a freezer or something. Yeah. You know, it's funny you say that because, you know, I, I never really got super into comics. Actually, you know, today I think there's a lot more, um, you know, like independent comic book writers uh you know like i think we have one that our buddy uh made up called i think it's like the shirtless bear fighting man or something it's some crazy crazy wild comic but for me uh you know i my collectible thing back in the day was uh was pokemon cards and you know thanks to my mom she must have uh i must have given her my binder because i had them all like you know like medically sealed kind of like things to really take care of them but uh you know i I almost forgot about them and then my mom showed me uh in in a box in the garage i have my collection from back in the day so i'm pretty excited about that i saw my my nephew was taking them out trying to play with them i was like wait that's my retirement (laughs) have you checked the cost of them um, I've thumbed through, there's no, there's no real, uh, you know, like crazy money makers uh, in there. Although I do have a memory from back in the day. I traded like a first edition Charizard for, uh, I think it was like a Blastoise and like a, some other, uh, some other character and you know, those things, those things are going for crazy amounts of money nowadays. It, so, I you know. I don't mean this as a joke, but you never know. Did you get into the Beanie Babies? Yeah, yeah, Did I was you? Into Beanie Babies back in the day. Um, <laughs> I don't think any of those survived, but survived the couple moves. Thank you. Yeah, military brat. Thank you for the reminder. That's why I never kept my comic books because all the freaking moves that we had due to the Navy moving us all around the place. Thank you yeah. for that. Yeah, yeah. I, it's amazing uh, what. I mean, just the tens of thousands of dollars for a little stuffed animal with a tag on it. I mean, oh, yeah. I mean, you can, nice. yeah. I mean, what you can buy? What a new Mercedes or maybe I don't know. I could be exaggerating. I don't know if a Beanie Baby could be worth over a hundred grand, like the price of a Maserati or something. Well, that's the Charizard. I think I saw one go for like half a million or something. What? <laughs> Seriously? I mean, I could be wrong. It might have been like a hundred thousand, but like it was some something that just made my eyes go, and then it brought me back to that memory, and I was like, "Damn it!" <laughs> <You know? laughs> what yeah. What's the life like been since childhood? How do you see yourself with the accomplishments you're you you've made? You're continuing to make. You're very different from other child stars in a business. And if you're able to share, have you found that you've been able to retain your identity outside of your family history where you don't have to worry about somebody opening up doors because of the name Bridges and that they respect you for who you are because you've, you're just a standalone guy and professional i mean i i hope that's coming across clear to you of what i'm asking yeah yeah you know well i i was i kind of say that i was lucky that i wasn't exactly like a child star i really started in college although i did i think i may have done something like one or two projects when i was a kid but uh you know as far as the name and everything uh yeah you know it's like i it is something i do want to make my own way But at the same time, I really want to honor, like, you know, what my dad and, you know, family have have done for the industry. So it's kind of like a double-edged sword sometimes, you know. I I definitely, definitely want to make my way. But also, you know, working with family is, it's, it's one of the, you know, greatest honors in a lot of ways. It's something that, you know, my grandpa helped get my, my dad and uncle some jobs in the beginning, but then later on, you know, he was asking them if there was any parts for him in their movies that they were doing. Mm. And you've got a incredible history. Hold on for a moment. I've got it right here. And I'm, I'm reading this correctly. 
is it that you are of Hawaiian descent or part of Hawaiian culture? What is your oh, connection? No, no. I, well, my folks have had a place there uh, since the early 90s. So, you know, we have a lot of uh, friends out there and I'm actually developing uh, a movie right now. It's an animated film with a dear friend of ours, Michael Kiale. And uh, yeah, I mean, the eye of the goat, it's uh it's a story that was based on an old folk song from Mike's family that's been passed down from generation to generation. It has to do with life, death, you know, love and redemption. And, uh, you know, in, in many cultures, including the Hawaiian culture, family history was preserved in stories told from one generation to another, but that, that history did not, only consist of like census records and birth certificates. It it's centered around how Hawaiians interacted with other Hawaiians and how they interacted with the Aina, like the island, which includes land, ocean, mountains, you know, even animals. And to this day, family gods like the Mono, Shark, the Mo'o, Lizard, the Hanu, Turtle, are still highly revered and respected. But uh you know, as for as long as as the as far as the uh, the movie goes, it centers around a goat and how the the main character becomes possessed with pursuing it, but doesn't exactly know why. And the goat, on the other hand, seems possessed as well and leading him into a to a place that's you know yet to be determined in the film. I don't want to give too much away about it, but uh. So I see it's centered around yeah. how Hawaiians interacted with other Hawaiians, how they interacted to the, is that the Aina? Aina? The Aina. Aina. Are there the native Hawaiians, are they part of this project at all? What did you include? How was, how was any more of history from their perspective shared in this narrative? Well, it takes place in uh, the Kalalau Valley back in the 1800s. It was kind of like the intersection of, uh, you know, the old gods and like the kind of the new Christianity coming into it. And it's, um, you know, it's it's the story of a father and son going on a hunting trip. Uh, the son dies and then this man gets incredibly angry with himself and life at, you know, at a hole. And, uh, he sees this goat, which was his, like his son's pet goat. And he chases it up the mountain and, uh, the goat leads him to the exact spot that his son died. And he has, you know, these really kind of terrible things that he has to deal with mentally. And, uh, and then, yeah, yeah. I mean, I don't, wanna, I don't want to talk too much about it because you know we're still trying to, mm -hmm. trying to get it going. Uh, but you know, it's fully developed. We're shopping it around. We've been uh, having some good meetings, and um, I mean, I'm, I'm really excited about it. Obviously, I'm sure if uh, anyone were to go to IMDb, they could find out a little information. But we're, we're giving a little bit of a plug on it to to share with everyone here on Power 98.5 Satellite Radio as well as Biz Talk Radio. And for those that are tuning in to the live interview, I've got Mr. Zeke Bridges with us today. He's an actor. Can we add on that you're a producer as well? I mean, you're going to have more titles, don't you? Yes, uh, I do a little bit of writing as well. What's your passion? Acting, writing, all the above? What brings you more to the fore of who you are? Uh, I really love telling stories um, and, again, you know, anything that has to do with animals. Uh, I worked a little bit at the Australia Zoo back in the day and, uh, you know, can't get enough of the animals. <laughs> May have to set you up with David Rogers, who's uh, the owner of the Australian Firefighters Calendar, and they have all wildlife that's part of it, including dogs and cats and 100% of the proceeds goes to helping uh, fight cancer and everything. Uh, oh, it's amazing. Yeah, it's it's incredible how, you know, in the opportunity, especially with Eye of the Go, I'm looking forward to this. I enjoy watching stories and hearing stories about the power of an animal. 
the the the, yeah. the royalty of even something as a butterfly or a dragonfly or a rabbit that's that's what i find like it like what the like- what they're all about the the totem the the energy to this do you find that fascinating and uh-huh. now personally do you like to or would you ever get more involved in whether it's animation whether it's even a film of bringing more to light about the power and not just with the Hawaiian culture, but how, whether it's religion or native cultures, uh, really value animals. Yeah. I think there's something inherently spiritual about animals. You know, they're these, these living beings that, you know, don't speak the same language of us, but they, you know, they command so much, uh, respect from a lot of people and like, and just draw up so much interest, you know, it's like, there's this bustling amount of like life all over the earth. And it's, uh, it's, uh, um, it's really an amazing thing. We know you're busy, so I don't expect that everything to be perfect behind you. We, <laughs> I just, you know, a little bit, it's all good. Um, yeah, it's, uh, I just had a moment there for a moment. Um, I don't know, like, what else? I, I mean, not only would I look forward to, to seeing you, hopefully, by the end of the year, provided if you're able to come out and this film festival takes off, but what else have you, you got yourself more into and what brings you most joy of what's going on in your life? Because there's not too much information out there about you personally. And if it's meant to be that way, I don't mind keeping it that way. Yeah. You know, in my, in my private or in my personal life, I like to keep things a little private just because, uh, you know, I, growing up in, in the business and kind of seeing how it can affect people. I, like to you know keep a low profile for the most part but uh you know as far as things i'm working on uh steven's pass is um what's up next in the uh in the pipeline and that is uh it's a survival story that takes place in the pacific northwest on the steven's pass hiking trail in the 80s there was like this um big nature event called uh heat dome that wiped out a bunch of hikers on the trail. The temperature raised above, you know, triple degree heat for weeks at a time. Hikers were stranded out there without water, you know, a way out of their, uh, out of their situation. And uh, I'll be playing first Lieutenant Clark or Ranger Clark. He helps save the protagonists from their, uh, their endeavors and, you know, it's going to be directed by Amanda Renee Knox, who I've worked with in the past, and you know she's just incredible. She's uh, she's one of the most motivated and talented emerging directors I've seen today. And uh, so far, myself and Katrina Law are attached to the film, and um, hopefully, that's going to start shooting uh, this summer. Oh, that'll be exciting! Wow, how many months? Yeah, it's a I get to go up in a helicopter. I'm excited. <laughs> <laughs> is pr- what productions for the whole summer or is it just going to be short? What's happening? Uh, we haven't gotten our schedules yet, but it's, uh, it's, uh, I think we're going to be shooting in the Pacific Northwest. So, you know, it will take some time, but it's going to be, it's going to be a fun one. One of the things I wasn't too sure about doing, cause I just, I don't plan this out, but I'm going to do, a thing called where are you now? So going back to July 17th of 2023, there was an article by shout out LA meet Ezekiel Bridges, actor, writer, and producer. So we're going to go back to finding out from over a year ago or, or no, not, is it a year ago? Going to be coming up a year very, very soon. So they had asked you, how do you think about risk? I've got the answer in front of me, but what comes to your mind now, Zeke, about risk? What have you done? What do you consider to be a risk in your life? And what what can you offer? Well, I think risks need to be taken. Um, it's uh, one of the only ways to really find out 
something about your life, you know, it's a, cause if you don't take that risk, then you'll never really know what might've happened, what could have happened. It, it just opens up a lot of um, avenues for possibilities in one's life. I think just being an actor in itself is, <laughs> is a massive <laughs> risk, you know, it's, uh, it's not something to be taken lightly. You're you got to prepare, prepare, prepare. Your answer then was taking risks is one of the great ways to grow in life. Every time you take a risk and put yourself out there, the universe will respond. Sometimes that response will surprise and enlighten you on new possibilities. How do you feel about that now? You still agree with that? Yeah. Yeah, I still agree with that. It's actually kind of similar <laughs> to what I said. So maybe, <laughs> maybe you know, I'm still in that, in that, uh, that, that period of just, you know, taking risks. What keeps you busy professionally? Hmm. Auditions, uh, writing, meeting with uh, the teams of uh, you know people that, for these projects. Mm -hmm. Another one uh, that's happening right now is I'm developing a. Uh, it's kind of like a, a continuation story of sorts for Sea Hunt. It, uh, it stars Michelle Nelson, who is um, the granddaughter of Mike Nelson, who was played by my grandfather, Lloyd. And uh, she's a surfer turned Coast Guard kind of CGIS member. And the show will follow her and her team through different sieges, raids, and international scenarios involving the Coast Guard. Uh, I got to meet a lot of the real deal people out there. I went to... Um, the uh, it was a, the changing of command at the uh, the base in Long Beach, the Coast Guard base, and it was really amazing. I got to meet a lot of cool people: Commander Lisa Sharkey and Commander Rob Poitinger. Uh It was just a it was a really really great time, and um, that one I'm I'm pretty excited about. That one's not as far along. That one we're still you know developing, working on episodes and things, and. But, uh, you know, making contacts, that's a big part of it. Always, always. I mean, everything's public relations. It is about that Rolodex, but also the type of relationship and in, relationship or ships or impacts that you've left uh, to be remembered by, you know, even something so simple or kind. Uh, almost a year ago, your answer is art is amazing, hands down, whether it's the art of telling a story or making something with your hands. Yeah. And, you know, art can be found in nature, too. Uh, I was taking a walk on the beach with my cousin the other day, and he found this <laughs> this amazing rock that uh, right in the center is like it looked like a smooth river stone. And right in the center of the of the rock was this like perfect monkey paw. It, I don't know if it was um, some kind of like seashell that got, you know, smushed by sand a million years ago and kind of made this fossil, but like it looked exactly like a monkey paw. <laughs> it's the coolest thing ever. Let's say your best friend was visiting the area and you wanted to show them the best time ever. Where would you take them? Give us a little itinerary. Say it was a week long trip. Where would you eat, drink, visit, hang out, etc.? Hmm. Well, I think we'd have to start at the beach, maybe. <laughs> uh, an undisclosed point because I don't want to <laughs> give away the spot. <laughs> no, you can't <laughs> but, do that. No, uh, uh, but no, yeah, start there. Maybe get some breakfast burritos at the country kitchen, a uh, little shack there on PCH. Um, and then, you know, I, I really enjoy watching movies. So maybe go to one of the local theaters, catch a movie, maybe go hunt for some seashells. And then, uh, hmm, where would we eat later that night? Been, uh, I've been really into some Korean barbecue. Ooh. Ooh. Yeah, maybe go get some bulgogi, some rice, some kimchi. Okay. Yeah. And then, you know, probably if you get some drinks, maybe go somewhere local. Always the best. Yeah. Your answer a year ago was, 
How interesting. It's, uh, I would definitely take them to the beach and get one of my favorite breakfast burritos at Country Kitchen. Oh yeah. See, I'm a, I'm a creature of habit, man. (laughs) (laughs) It's a small little shack in Malibu across from Duke's restaurant and later go see a live show at Aviator Nation, an intimate venue also in Malibu. Oh yeah. Later in a week, we'll do a full food and drink tour, stopping at one of my favorite places in Santa Monica, Upper West, but it wouldn't be right. uh, But it wouldn't be right passing through Santa Monica without getting a burger from heavy handed. Oh yeah. Shout out heavy handed. <laughs> Shout out heavy handed. That was a burger restaurant started by my uh, dear friend, Danny Gordon from back in the day. And uh, yeah, he just opened up a second location. Did he? Studio city. Yeah. You got to let them know about the interview and you went down uh, where are you a, a little, a little questionnaire of where you're at now. And, and there you go. Yeah. Even about a year ago, you dropped uh heavy handed. Yeah. That's, yeah. And yeah. And since then he's actually opened the second one. So yeah, it's been going well. In quote, you wrote best burgers in town and my buddy owns a place a hundred percent recommend. Yes. Yeah. Still stands. That's awesome. Ser- seriously, that's a huge success, not only to get one location, but two. Wow. Oh, yeah. And the, the place is, is awesome. You know, they got cool art all over the place, really bright colors. And it's, it's, a, it's a mean short rib beef smash burger. It's really, really good. Is he planning on franchising it at all? Um, I, maybe. I don't know. You can let them know. I suggested well, it if it's that walk, good. Stop by and check into them. Yeah, seriously. I mean, it's something to consider. I, what you telling me that that's the first thing that comes to my mind. That's where you can not only impact and help a community and create great jobs, but also. Yeah, you know, I say the way things are going, I, I would be surprised if they didn't. Uh, the shout out series is all about recognizing that our success and where we are in life is at least somewhat thanks to the efforts, support, mentorship, love, and encouragement of others. So, is there someone that you would want to dedicate your shout out to? Where you're at? Where are you at now with that, Zeke? Can I say two names? You say whatever you want. <laughs> I'll say Jackson Keller, an amazing writer, mm-hmm. childhood friend of mine. He's got uh, some things in the works right now and working on funding. And he's just, I mean, he's hilarious. He's so, he's such a good writer. And uh, he's making like a coming of age story right now. Um, and then the other one I'd have to shout out is Amanda Renee Knox. She's an incredible director. We're getting ready to work on this next one. And uh, I mean, I think I think people need to start giving her projects left and right. Your answer a year ago is, my family has been incredibly supportive. i like to shout out my father, Bo, who has been my coach in every sense of the way since I was young, from soccer, basketball coach, on little league teams, to acting coach as an adult. He's a powerful and sensitive man with a trained eye for entertainment. You also said that you like to give a shout out to Stephanie Fury. Yeah, Stephanie Fury. She is an acting coach I met in college and later studied with in Hollywood. I recommend her class to everyone that is interested. And then lastly, you said, as well as a shout out to Amanda Renee Knox, a creative collaborator. She is a world-class director. We've worked on several projects together and plan for more in the future. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Stephanie Fury, they're uh, they're taking signups now. Go check it out. How does it feel going down memory lane? Where you, where are you at now? Hearing hearing your answers from almost a year ago and then knowing where you're at now. Yeah, you know, it's nice. It's um it's it's funny how uh similar some of the things were, but I guess, you know, a year well, a, a lot can happen in a year, but you know, I guess there's two perspectives on it. A year is not that long and a year is a long time. But uh, it, it was funny seeing how like similar some of the answers were, and I mean, it just just makes me realize, you know, hey, yeah, I am a little creature of habit. I like to do the same things, kind of maintain my my status quo, and yeah. 
how do you feel about your own evolution? I mean, not only in that moment and that experience, Zeke, but the fact to where the the feeling of what you've accomplished in that time, but most importantly, what you've kept near and dear to your heart. It's incredible to have a, that reflection, that mirror in front of you where you're able to associate some sort of reflection to compare in a very good way to have an understanding of what really held value in your life. Yeah. Yeah. You know, some, some of it being so similar kind of makes me want to shake some things up a little bit. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Sometimes, uh, sometimes you need a good shakedown, but, uh, yeah, you know, it, really at the end of the day, I just kind of want to be remembered as a good person. So I try and, you know, bring that up in my life as much as possible to, you know, do acts of service or reach out to old friends, you know, something, something to just remind you that you're alive and that at the end of the day, everyone's good. You know, at least that's how, what I believe everyone's, everyone's born good and we want to make the earth that we live on a peaceful place for everyone around. Are you hopeful of not only where the industry is going, but what words of wisdom can you share to those who are wanting to be in a position that you're in as a writer, producer, actor, what is the hope that you can convey so that people just don't get tired of being tired to just give up. Oh, well, you just got to keep pushing. It's definitely, it could be, you know, a little scary with, uh, kind of long spats of, of, of nothing happening, but you just got to keep, uh, keep working on it and believe in your projects. And, you know, if you have something that you've been writing and you've taken a year or two off of it, maybe jump back. You're going to have a brand new kind of uh, per perspective on the whole thing. And uh, maybe that third act that you got stuck on will start to, <laughs> to come to you because you took that time off. So don't like, I guess my, what I'm saying is don't feel bad uh, on yourself. If you, if you feel like you're stuck, give it, give it a little time, come back to it and some new things will surface. Are you a dad yet, or do you plan on being a dad? Uh, no, I'm not a not a father of my own yet. Um, yeah, I'd like to have some kids one day. Yeah, definitely. Well, we'll see how you feel if you're going to be like, hey, you know what? The film industry inspired me so much, and I have so much to look forward to and so proud to share this forward for, you, for your own kids. And uh, it, it'd be nice of... You know, to know that that conversation could happen and to see what the reflection would be like in comparison to your journey of the legacy you're leaving, leaving for where you've come from and then what you could possibly do for your child or children that you should have. And I can picture you having at least one boy, one girl. <laughs> that would be pretty cool. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I don't see it at any time in the near future. But, uh, but definitely one day. Yeah. Are you ever planning on, and this isn't, I feel that this is a legitimate question. You have an incredible look. You've got a very interesting way of expressing your identity through fashion, through photo, even a look at your Instagram and everyone can go ahead and check out Zeke's Instagram page, Zeke Bridges. It's different. It's it's very it's very organic and authentic. It's not Hollywood. Has that always been you, or is there some sort of resistance that's inside of you that you see something every day in the business and you just come to realize naturally who you are so well that there is no question that you don't always need to have on or wear a Tom Ford or Louis Vuitton or carrying around some a Gucci bag. Yeah. Well, that's, that's interesting. I actually, I don't, 
I don't really like all the designer stuff. I, I don't know. I don't. I think I, I don't know. I don't actually. That's not really it. Because when I put on something like a cool design thing, I feel I feel awesome, you know. Like, but like at the end of the day, it's like most of my clothes are just gifts, you know. Like, I don't. I, I probably should work on my fashion, <laughs> my fashion <laughs> sense a little more. <laughs> yeah, it's usually gifts or you know clothes that got left behind. I'm like, oh, I like that shirt. It looks like it's a comfy shirt, you know. <laughs> well, it's uh, uh, yeah, depending it's, it's on. Something that, no, okay, so much to probably work on. I, yeah, you and I had that conversation. You know what? I would like to see if it ever happens because you offer a lot of wildlife photos and, and content on your page is some sort of um, recycled, whether it's clothing or something. Like, I don't know. I, I, I just think I'm not saying to start a fashion brand. I'm just going to say just don't dismiss it that you could end up um, – creating something that's very earthy, very natural, very environmentally friendly and have a good story behind it. Yeah. You know, that's not a bad idea. I, I definitely do love those kind of more earthy brands and then earth tones, browns, greens, you know. What's your music of choice now? Uh, well, you know, I really, I really love all types of music, but, um, one band I've been listening to on repeat, they're a relatively small band, still uh, Guantanamo Bay Surf Club. <laughs> Their first album has like probably three or four different genres of music on it, but it's so good. Um, I would recommend people checking that out. Uh, you know, and I kind of I kind of lean usually more towards like acoustic stuff or, you know, reggae, but then when I get a wild hair up on me, you know, I listen to some punk and some metal and stuff. You know, I, I listen to a lot of different genres. Any book you can recommend? Hmm. Acting the first six lessons. Ooh. Repeat that again. The book is called Acting the First Six Lessons by Richard Bolosovsky. It was a book that was passed from my grandpa to my, my folks. And, you know, they ended up passing it down to all, all my, myself and all my siblings. And uh, it's, a, it's, a really, it's a really amazing book. It's actually my sister directed a movie based on the book. So there's also that if you want to check that out. Yeah, drop that Stop. name. Yeah, yeah. Acting the First Six Lessons directed by Emily Bridges. And uh, my father, Bo, is also in it. They shot it over at the Ringling College. Wow. They got just amazing uh, facilities over there. You know why I asked? Because about a couple rows down, you've got this beautiful photo of all of these books laying out on the floor with the... Oh, yeah. Sam Shepard. Yeah. It's it's a gorgeous photo. I'm like, all right, what is this from? Yeah, that was uh, that was actually when I was studying at uh, the Stephanie Fury Acting Studio in Hollywood. Uh, we were, you know, she's so good at picking out, um, you know, different playwrights or specific plays for that, like uh, that person, you know. And she, uh, it was it was Sam Shepard time for us, and we ended up doing a uh, play on. Uh, cowboy mouth which is you know pretty wild <laughs> wild uh, play in itself i think sam shepherd and patty smith wrote that on some kind of like drug fueled hotel bender <laughs> <laughs> when uh, you know back in the day it's a, it a wild wild play zeke thank you for being with us today on live on air with Stephen quoco on power 98.5 and biz talk radio any closing thoughts no, you know, thank you for having me on your show, man. It was uh, it was a pleasure talking to you. It's always it's always a good time. I appreciate it, and I appreciate you. And thank you again. It's it's an honor, and can't wait to meet you in person. Yes, I'm looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to the uh, the film festival as well. I appreciate that. I'll keep you posted, and everyone else, thank you again. Head on over to Zeke's page, Instagram, Zeke Bridges. Check the schedule on Power 98.5 and BizTalk Radio. Stay tuned.